All right, let's see what else we got here. We'll go ahead and move the uh, area on the original geo out of the way. Kind of see what's going on. It's always fun to do this. And you got your like simple crude sculpt and then you can begin to add some more interesting geometry to it. So we'll just like make this piece here. So turn on edit topology. I've got my Z-sphere selected. And I'll just begin blocking this thing in here. So I know I'm going to want to have <clears throat> some kind of like rim along the top. So I've got this little edge. Like in place, so now I can, I've got some some geo that I can do my creasing. This isn't going to work. As I, that's going to want to make a triangle, so I'm just going to get rid of it, and we'll just add a little dedicated geo in there. Make sure I've got the right vert that I'm drawing from. So hold Control. I'm going to tap S. The uh, the to brush size works equally. It works the same between retop and sculpting, right? So like. If uh, if I've got um, the move mode turned on and I make my brush size big, I can move everything. So if you're having trouble, you just want to you just want to tweak the position of of one of your verts in your retop. Just make your brush a little bit smaller, and that process will be a lot easier. Uh, so I need to bring some geometry down here, and ultimately it'll need to kind of conform with what's going on on this geo. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift D so I can see that. And you can always add extra geo down here, right? Like if I wanted a little more curvature, but then you start running into some potential issues. I mean, it's like one one extra edge loop, so it's not that difficult to dial in the curvature on it. But just so I can line everything up, we'll start drawing from there. And we'll just do something like that. So I want to have a little bit of a curvature there, but I want this to be straight. So I've made that straight, and I'm just going to go ahead and add the geo that I want. And this should work out pretty well. And then we're just going to need to run this down like that. And this will be interesting because it'll allow us to... You can see how embedded that is. That's because I just drew this across and it didn't take into account what's actually going on with the geometry, how it kind of pops up. But that's going to give us a nice little extra bit of, of variation there. And then that's going to be awkward. So I, I kind of want to... I mean, that's possible. That's That would be like the the uh, easiest way to, to clean that up. But then we run into this this little situation here. So the best solution when you may not get this right away but it'll you'll start to recognize the stuff is is we can just add an extra edge right here that we can then just run along like that right so if I do that now we have a quad there and it gives me the ability to add a little more volume along this edge and then that's a smoother transition and I've got the geometry here that's kind of matching up so we should be good to go there let's hit uh, solo and A. A is the uh, key to get the geometry preview up, and then I can just hit Make Polymesh 3D. Hop back over there, and we will append it in. Tap A to go back to the retop. I'm going to hit Delete Topo. And I'm going to hide that geometry, so now I can just come over and run through this process quickly again. Polygroup all. There's a there's a thing you can do where when you create when you convert it from a z-sphere you can add skin thickness, but one of the things that I think is is it's an easy trap to fall into is when all of the extrusions have the same exact thickness and all of the all the edges, you know, like this thickness here. If I use that same thickness everywhere, it it uh, just makes it feel a little more, I don't know, maybe not really conforming to or or, or uh, well, that's the right word. It's just not as as visually dynamic when everything is the same. So it's better to just add in some variety, do things manually so you get that stuff. All right, so preserve that. Let's see, and then I'll probably want to come over and hit these guys 
And we'll do these corners too. Go ahead and set our crease level here. It's like three and four. Now we can kick this back over to its default state. And you can see it's it's like it's close, but it's not quite. And that's one of the, like, we've just got some, some different, because we've got this extra edge here. So we're just gonna have to come in and with it in sub D, we'll just make some, some minor adjustments. Oh, that should probably not be creased. That's gonna be a problem too. So we'll go to Z modeler and uncrease. And it looks like this edge here needs to be uncreased as well. And maybe it's this, this upper edge that's actually, I mean, they're pretty close and that's pretty flat. So whatever. We'll just use the move brush to try to get that distance there a little more consistent and then we can throw some kind of a transitional feature in like this. We'll just add in, uh, add an extra edge. Whoops, I had to restart so all my buttons are back to the default. All right, invert, control W. We'll do an inflate, polygroup all, increase polygroups. And at some point I apparently applied a color. It's easy to do if you, if you're just basically mouse over anything and you hit C, it'll, it'll sample whatever color you happen to be on top of. So to, to reset that, just open up your color menu and drag the inside one up to the, uh, the upper edge there. So I just mentioned a minute ago about being careful not to have everything be the same, right? So this is, we've kind of created that scenario and it's okay, right? Like if this was, it's, it's not the end of the world. If, if uh, everything had a, a somewhat consistent transition from one panel to the next, but what we can easily do is we can just kind of scoot some stuff around so I'm going to use the Z-Mauler brush and I'm going to use slide here. And the way slide works in a vertex context, uh, context is you can just, you can basically stick to an edge. So now we start to get this kind of thing where there's just, again, it's just like a little bit more, you got something like that, it's going to be maybe a little bit poppy as it tries different edges depending on what it thinks you want. But that small stuff there can, can begin to propagate over the entire model and just make it feel a little bit more interesting. And we can do something kind of similar here. In this case, maybe I'll, we'll do it with these edges down here. Let's do a slide. So slide works on verts and edges, but if you slide an edge, like if I was gonna come over here, it's gonna, it's gonna modify the original one as well. So sometimes it can just be easier to just stick to the verts. We get something that gives us a nice little transition. And if I want this to be a little more a little more noticeable, well I can just mask it. So we'll do a little mask there. And then so I'm uh probably let's see, where's my little transpose? It's like if I tap the W key, I have to hit F here. All right, so I tap the W key, which puts me into move mode, but for some reason, like this, um, the, the location of this head is pretty high off the baseline, like the, whatever the ground plane is. So it's putting the camera pivot way down there, which is why this is all awkward for me now. But if you just hold Alt and click on the surface, it will bring the transform gizmo to wherever you click. That's what I was, that was I think I was forgetting to hit Alt or, or maybe hitting a different key. And once it's, once it's in this mode, I can either leave it here. You notice whenever, wherever I'm, I'm clicking, it's gonna orient and axis along whatever that face is, right? So like I, in this case, it's the green axis. You know, if I come over here, it's gonna be blue axis. It's all kind of random. I mean, it's probably not that random, but to me, it feels a little bit random. Or you get the same behavior with the transpose uh, tool here, where you click on the surface and I, they're both exactly the same. But in this case, I'm just going to use this one and I'll, I'll uh, use the move brush. And what I want to do is I just like to scoot this up. Kind of like that. 
to once again just add a little bit of variety to what's going on with the surface. So very very simple and then uh, you know you could continue to, to add additional stuff with live boolean or whatever and the nice thing about live boolean is you still have access to all your low poly functionality that you get through ZModeler but you can still begin to get some really interesting combinations of shapes which which again give the illusion of complexity when what's really going on is it's not that complicated. So real quick let's just take a look at what we've got here with our head and this is it with live boolean disabled right so you can see I've got some like little donutty things there and these little slot shapes this geo is actually an insert mesh brush using geometry that I built in Fusion 360 if you're familiar with that tool if you're not there's some tutorials on my site and on YouTube it's really really easy uh, you can see there's our little live boolean and if I kick on live boolean suddenly we have all this additional detail so all these pieces here they still have their original low poly configuration so I can go back and make whatever changes I want and they were all built in the exact same way that I just demonstrated a rough sculpt and then the retop and then using whatever I want with the Z modeler creasing edges adding some variety and then and you can ac actually see still inside I haven't done the, the back of the mouth yet so that's still that crew geo in fact I probably have it in here you can see what it looks like once it's been pretty well eroded away but that's the idea so that's the workflow for hard surface geometry and I guess probably if I've got some extra time I'd like to do a, a shorter demonstration of a project that might be worth following along with from the beginning.